All right, I'm very much excited to introduce you to this awesome project. So um, I'm going to give you a demonstration of this project that we can do. So previously we can build a model in the notebook like this. And then we do all the analysis we do. We build a model, do all the visualizations and things like that. We do all analysis over here, right? But what if you can actually make this more interesting by building an app like this where the users can come here, just click on a button to build the same model, do all the analysis right from an app like this instead of doing it in a notebook like this, which sometimes confuse a lot of people, especially your stakeholders who are not technical. But you can give them an app like this one, which they can just, based on a button, to be clicking on buttons and then build the same app right from here. So I'm going to give you a demonstration of this one, which will um, be more interesting, which will show you how interesting this one can be instead of building this one from the code notebook. All right. So we're going to go to the lab where we're going to build a model which is able to classify items into groups. All right, so we have a customer data and then based on the customer data, we want to do customer segmentation. All right, so I'm going to walk you through step by step in the code notebook. But the most exciting part is that I'm going to show you how we are going to build this app based on the data. So over here, instead of doing everything in the notebook like this, right, instead of building the model in the notebook like this, what I'm going to show you is how to actually deploy the model and then even build it right in the app when the user upload their data. All right, so if you come over here, right, so you see that I have a drag and drop file upload button over here, right? Let's say that you click on this and then they upload a file, right? Now, as soon as they upload a file, the file is going to be uploaded over here and show you. So this is the file that we have is customer data and we want to cluster this. Okay, so we want to build a clustering algorithm on this where we will be able to cluster the customers based on their behavior, their buying behavior or the country they are from, or I mean, based on something. Okay, we want to classify them in this into a certain category. So if you see the data set, you see that we have invoice number, stock code, product quantity, invoice date, unit price, customer ID, country, total, and then category. So what we want to do is that if you come over here, we want to do segmentation. So we can segment them based on their country or we can segment them based on the country and category. So we have, we have, I mean, category over here, right? So, and then we have the products and then we have the country that they are from. So we can segment them based on that. And then we can build the K-means model right inside this app. Instead of maybe building it over here, right? Like I did over here, you see that if you go all the way down here, I built the model right inside here and I did everything but we can also do it right from the app. Okay, so here, let's say we want to segment it by country. If we click on that and we come here, now I see what it's doing. So based on each of the countries, we're able to segment the customer. So United Kingdom, these are the products that are being bought over there. The most, I did it for the top five, right? You can do it for the top 10, top 20 or whatever. If I click on United Kingdom, I'll be able to see the products. I mean, the product categories in United Kingdom, right? and then present that one to my stakeholders or I can pick a different country let's say Germany right and then I'll see the product that are being bought over there the most I can pick a different one let's say Belgium right if I click on that you see the different products out there right now we can also do that based on country you can also see the products that are being sold so Australia these are the products Australia right bedroom and all that you can see over them there if you click on the button again it takes it off now you can go to the level 2 segmentation where you segment them based on the category and the country this time we have the country and then we have the category then we have the products in the category unlike the first one where we have the country and then straight away we go to the product but if we go to the level 2 we'll be able to see we'll be able to see the country the category and then the products okay so if I pick say United Kingdom I can see the categories that are there and then for each of the categories what are the top five products so if you pick electronics these are the top five product that people buy in electronics let's go back and then we can do it for a different um, I mean country if we pick Germany these are the products in there right if we pick clothing these are the product that are bought the most in clothing you can go back and then we pick stationery, right these are the products that are being bought the most so you can do it for any of the countries that are here right 
you can do it for any of them if i pick this one here right belgium and then you can see bedroom clothing beverages and all of that if i pick say diary these are the product that i bought the most in diary if i pick clothing these are the product that i bought the most in over there so i can segment my data set like this this is how i want to present to my stakeholders instead of the raw data like this okay see this one is more interesting now that's not even the most interesting part. Look at the one that will surprise your stakeholders and supervisors. If you go to the K-means, if you click on this, it builds the model right inside here for you. So if you come here, you see that as we learned, you need to get the best K in order to know how many segments you are creating or segmenting your data set into. So here the best K that gives us the minimum error that we are making is six. So we use that one to build a model. And that's what it's showing you here and then it's going to add the clusters into the table the original table you see that we don't have any clusters it ends at category but once it builds the model it's going to add the clusters over there and then it's going to plot this one to show you the cluster so for beverages right beverages is in cluster one right and then cluster zero is this one electronics and stuff like that and then it's going to plot it for you to see which of the items it has clustered them into the categories okay so you can see so if you pick for instance zero over here got cluster zero right you can see the items that are in cluster zero Okay, which is very interesting, right? If you go back and then you pick cluster one, you'll see all the items that have been clustered into cluster one. And you see the names that it's giving you. So cluster one, for instance, is this one is beverages. And you can see, right, juice and protein shake and stuff like that, right? Wine, they're all beverages, right? If you pick, say, cluster four, right, it's saying that cluster four is what is this one, dairy. So you can see over there, milk and things like that ice cream cheese they are all dairy right so it's actually doing very very well and this one is when if you want all of them if you want to put all of them in fact you can let's say i want to see segmentation for say cluster zero and cluster one so i can untick everything else except cluster zero and then cluster one now you see that so i can do the segmentation like this and then present it based on what my stakeholders are interested in if i go into cluster one i can present to them the things that are there if i go into cluster zero i can present to them the things that are there very interesting right and i can add maybe i want to compare cluster five and cluster three right so i can take cluster zero and one off and then i can do for cluster three cluster five right which is very very interesting and i mean you can also show the items that are there so if you come here for cluster five we see that these are the items that are there so if you want to copy them you can just copy those items from cluster five right you can do it for cluster three you see that cluster three these are the items that are there you can copy them if you want right and then you can also show detailed clusters this one right if you go back it shows you let me even do it for all of them and see all right this one shows you all the clusters right but i can show the category the clusters the country and everything i can show all of that so if i click on detail right and then i come down here you see how it is i can do it for the countries I can compare this one with the one that we did here and then see if our model is doing well as compared to the original clusters that we have. All right, so you can also do it that way. So for United Kingdom, cluster zero is for electronics. Okay, and then if we go, let's pick UK, right? Cluster zero is electronics. If you go in there, you see the things in there are electronics. Okay, so our model is really doing good. So this is how you can assess your model, if it's doing good or not right if i pick dairy itself right i can actually go into details like that right then it comes to the class test and all that i can do it for each of the countries that i have over here right this is for portugal right you can see that right go to beverages go with that so there's a whole lot of segmentations that you can do on this one right and you can also see um you can pick each of the categories or each of the products and see which clusters we put that particular product into for instance if we pick envelope envelope is stationary in our original data set and our machine learning model clustered it into cluster 5 after building the k means model cluster 5 is stationary so envelope is supposed to be put there it's doing well right you can pick anything let's pick coconut water coconut water is put into beverages and we cluster it into cluster one let's go and see what cluster one is right cluster one is this one which has all items to be beverages and you can see cluster one as beverages right 
So our model is really, really doing good, right? how you cluster your items so this use case can be extended to a whole lot of different use cases where you want to cluster the items and then you want to build a model on it you can actually even add a button where users can supply new data points and then it automatically cluster them for you into one of the clusters that it has okay so that's that's really really um, interesting over there right so we we're going to see how we do this right from the scratch I'm going to walk you through step by step how to do this and how to build it on your, I mean, all by yourself. Okay, how to be all these things all by yourself. So I'm going to show you that in the lab session. All right, which is going to be very, very interesting. You're going to learn how to build your own app like this. All right, so let's get started.